Evening all. Okay, I'm just going to start the broadcast on the playchess.com server. So, okay. Just initializing on the playchess server. Evening all on uh, both live stream and uh, playchess server. Um, sound okay? Hi all. Hi Volk, Volty, Boruto, Blockplom, sorry, <laughs> but Bayer, Diplom, uh, JWS555, ELO250, Bronze Theme Fan. Hi. Hi all. Okay, I thought we could uh, carry on looking at Kasparov games from the 1986 um, Olympiad. So, um, with the black pieces, just to complete that off, because I think it's more difficult to um, play with the black pieces. Um, to equalize etc so uh, let's have a look at uh, this game so against the uh, Spanish team there was uh, Kasparov at the time of this game was 2740 and his opponent here uh, was Fernandez Garcia so um, okay let's have a look so Fernandez playing white so who's 2485 I assume uh, the board won for Spain in 1986 so um okay um i'll just make sure that the, the uh live stream should be should should be on i hope it's okay um as well okay so um we'll start so as uh white e4 was played and um Kasparov played uh, c5, Sicilian defence, and now after knight f3, uh, usually uh, Kasparov plays d6 to go into like a Nidorf, but now e6 can go either into, well initially a Sicilian can maybe, if K, A, N, if Black's can play a6 uh, soon. Uh, but also um, it can go into a time of if like a6 knight c6 uh, could be like time and of uh, knight c6 I think is the distinguishing feature of the time of uh, so for the moment um, well with this move uh, with e6 it means the bishop can potentially go to a useful square in one go in this uh, variation of of the Sicilian uh, I've mentioned this um, on my YouTube channel recently that e6 is can be more about piece play using the pieces rather than um, uh, delaying uh, like a, a pawn break or, or whatever so um, d4 was played in any case ct cd knight takes d4 and now we have kind of it looks like a time knob is going to be played because knight c6 exerting influence on d4 uh, and usually there'll be sort of accompanied by a6 anyway so with this immediate influence on d4 it means actually um, there's a potential uh, for knight takes d4 and sometimes if the queen's on c7 for bishop c5 in one go to get a tempo uh, white didn't seem too concerned about quick bishop c5s actually at this stage uh, he played actually g3 and so there was an immediate uh, bishop c5. So we see peace play facilitated by that e6. Um, so what is it doing on c5? Uh, well, it's push, pushing the knight back now. White reacts with knight b3. So the knight's not on totally an ideal square on b3. And a bishop, you, would, you could argue, well, can it go here? The problem with bishop b6, maybe, uh, just maybe, um, queen d6 could be annoying. Uh, on that diagonal or there could be other attractive options uh, for white potentially but queen d6 seems most apparent as an option but in fact the bishop retreated to e7 keeping an eye on on d6 and maybe black is just simply going to play d6 later transposing into kind of Shaveningen uh, structure um, but against the Fianchetto maybe the, the Shaveningen structure is quite effective so bishop g2 and now knight f6 and indeed we do get a Shaveningen structure because after castles now d6 
and you'll note um, often in, in main lines you know a6 and b5 uh, but in this situation with the bishop on that diagonal it's probably less appropriate to go for a6 and b5 here in fact um, white is now setting up a Moroxy bind with c4 so this Moroxy bind is all against black now playing for d5 okay so but there is there are sources of counterplay here and one might think it's, it's quite tricky actually to generate some counterplay in this position so this is quite interesting how this who's 2740 at the time of the game how does he deal with this moxy bind in fact i f i believe in tradition we should flip the board actually to take this perspective um okay so we're playing black here does does black normally uh, just castle well actually what he did was actually knight e5 so immediately as though you know knight takes c4 is on the cards and it might be because there's no queen a4 check the knight's in the way um so actually does c4 need to be uh, guarded well white does guard it with queen e2 and now it's attacked again queen c7 attacking c4 again so without castling black is exerting influence on that poor c4 pawn and forcing now an awkward looking move it seems um knight a3 was actually played which not only protects c4 but maybe also knight b5 is useful um you might think well also knight d2 might have been possible but um maybe maybe black uh, has interesting options after knight d2 but uh, knight a3 does carry with it uh, you know the venom of knight b5 so is this a problem does a6 need to be played but if it is played uh, you know maybe you know the dark squares are weakened in fact as far as the next move bishop d7 uh, knight b5 isn't a threat anyway in, in because maybe queen takes c4 uh, at the moment um, and that might be uh, an interesting exchange sack uh, or bishop takes b5 of course but for the moment bishop f4 is played and now rook c8 so again everything is against c4 here rook a c1 and now b6 so the c4 pawn is now fixed you know maybe c5 could have been useful to white at some point um, so that's kind of ruled out for the moment and because of bishop f4 it's not so easy for this knight to be shifted away with f4 uh, so maybe that's sort of getting in the way this looks like a pretty position and quite robust at the moment set up against uh, c5 the knights are quite awkward here um, what do you guys think um, do you think black uh, for the moment at move 14 is doing okay here uh, if I give you um, 20 seconds to get, get an evaluation, ideally with some reasons. So do you think black's doing okay, or do you think white's still got a small advantage here? Uh, what, what's your opinion so far about this? Any opinions? Shout them out. Doesn't matter what what you think. White's better. Black's better. About equal. Don't know. Okay. Or should we just move on? Um, all right. Blah blah blah. On on Twitch has written. Um, seems like Hedgehog with crazy nights. Um, someone um, else uh, has written. Uh, okay, something. Black is okay. Beard bond black is okay. I find f4 better. Yeah, it looks as though without f4, this knight is a bit nasty on e5. JWS555 writes black's okay, but I think I'll prefer to play white. Okay, now a forcing move by white, knight b5, which would seem uh, okay if black doesn't take, then the knight is free to reroute actually, potentially usefully. In fact, of course, if, if takes, you know, you're sealing the c6 square, giving up a, a light square bishop, because I've actually played queen b8. So it looks like a comfortable um, Roxy bind for the moment. Rook FD1. So it looks as though white's pieces are all pretty nifty actually in this position. And D5 is restrained. So, okay, so black castled, 
Now the knight centralizes. Rook f d8. And then we see bishop d2, which looks as though the idea might be in the future something like f4. Uh, maybe the bishop can come out usefully here, or uh, is that useful? On b2, uh, d2 at the moment is disrupting pressure on d file. Okay, so th this game is uh, for those who have just come in. Fernandez Garcia playing, I think, from board one for Spain in the Olympiad of 1986 against Kasparov playing black, who was 2740, I think, world champion at this time. So, bishop a4 now is played. Okay. Okay, so what's going on here? Bishop a4. Let's look at the next move, rook e1, and now a6. And it looks as though uh, b5 might be on the cards. So white actually plays a curious move, knight a1. Now, maybe that looks terrible, but if the knight re-centralizes with a vengeance, it might not be uh, so amusing. The bishop goes back, and it looks like a waiting game's been played. One thing I do like, I think it's quite stylish, uh, aesthetically, uh, to have bishops on e8 and e7. Just aesthetically, when I've noticed bishops on e8 and e7, um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, that looks great, doesn't it? To have the bishops together <laughs> covering these squares. I think it's quite nice um, that they're tucked away like that. The rooks look quite kind of nice as well. So black's position looks uh, as though there's no major weaknesses to attack at the moment. White seems to solidify his, his pawn chain with b3. Uh, so he's getting a kind of triangle-like formation here. And uh, maybe you know he could centralize a knight at leisure. It would seem knight f d seven, which looks as though well maybe you know c five might be useful. Okay, at some point now f four is played, knight g six, knight a c two. So the hedgehog, this looks like a hedgehog. Now hedgehogs um, are, pl are prone uh, to being uh, squashed. Um, so maybe that's one reason they call this um, a hedgehog. But the other feature of a hedgehog is that they're prickly. So, you know, if you're not careful, you can be stung uh, sort of by a hedgehog. Um, so either as white, it's going to squash the hedgehog or, hedgehog or he's going to get stung, uh, if we follow that uh, animal uh, metaphor. <laughs> but um, for the moment, bishop f6. Now, often uh, the pressure points for black are, are the dark squares and kind of tempting white to create weaknesses somewhere. King h1, which which takes the king out of any dangers on this diagonal, maybe. Knight c5, which tempts white, you know, maybe b4, but this would weaken the structure. To play b4 would be to weaken the structure. Bishop c3, and it looks as though white's got everything under control again. Uh, the pieces look okay for white. Bishop d7. A difficult to explain move. Maybe it's trying to discourage f5. Maybe knight e6 gets solidifying, strengthening e6 a little bit more. Knight e3, which looks sensible. But now, finally, something very exciting happens here. Uh, black goes for, it seems, counterplay now with b5 directly. b5 is possible. It's supported. It doesn't even lose a pawn. And it might weaken and white structure a little bit. It's undermining. It might isolate a pawn if white's not able to take with the knight or doesn't want to take with the knight we'll get an isolated c pawn so this is this is major news uh strategically structurally uh for white's pawn structure this b5 okay and and also if you look at d6 the pressure has been taken off the default there's nothing uh, probing d6 here so is the hedgehog going well so far um queen d2 and now B takes c4 and knight takes c4 avoids an isolated c pawn but with with this knight takes c4 you know maybe b5 is more useful without a pawn here um is this trickier for white and also the knight is subject to attack now with d5 so things are happening very very quickly now in the position ed ed isolated queen's pawn but with the isolated queen's pawn comes a nice peg for the knight maybe on e4 and if this bishop ever drops then this this diagonal might be useful to get to the white king 
knight e5. And here, Xbarov took on e5 and actually did play knight e4, hooking in that knight, using that isolated queen's pawn, and saying, really, look, if you do want to try and win a pawn, you know, this diagonal might be quite painful uh, for the king. So actually, uh, white uh, didn't want to take that knight. He actually, um, or did he? Let's see. Let's make sure. No, he did actually want to take the knight. He, de he dared take the knight. Pardon me. Bishop takes e4. <laughs> D takes. But he doesn't take the pawn now. He plays bishop a5. Which, um, okay, it attacks the rook, but surely black's got a lot of options now uh, to make use of. Um, he played rook e8, and that e5 does look vulnerable. E6, black took. So what's going on here? Knight c2, has white lost the thread? Is he just trying to set up now a blockade on e3? Uh, black's pawns look fragmented. But um, what about this knight e5 now? This pawn is a useful hook into key squares here. So although it looks quite ugly here, what is white doing with this pawn sack? Um, knight e3, queen b5, black's pieces are springing into life. All of a sudden there's pressure points all over the place. Knight f3 is threatened, queen's attacking this. What's going on here? Okay. So, in this position, queen b4, black took on c1, and it looks as though now huge amounts of counterplay and the weakness of the last move dynamics. When the queen had gone to b4, because Barth had noted that takes, he's got access now to e2 near the, near the king here, and this is looking nasty. And he makes use of this. So queen e2, and it looks really dangerous all of a sudden because of knight f3. You know, it looks as though what's happened? Where did all this counterplay occur? How did it occur? Queen d2, check. King g1. Now queen h5, nasty threat of knight f3, check. Oh dear. White's position seems to be... Uh, pretty diabolical now um, so a remarkable thing happened in this game uh, after rook c5 Kasparov played knight f3 uh, check and you know he can after the king moves he can later just take this rook so uh, white actually resigns here so a remarkable collapse showing the hedgehog uh, was more prickly than squashy in this game. So let's have a quick look in overview and summary. Um, so for a moment, for, for quite some time, there were a few waiting moves from both sides as the hedgehog was set up here. And it seems that um, things started to go quite dangerous uh, for white after this a6 and b5 plan was eventually... Um, played out. Now waiting for f4 did weaken this diagonal. Um, after knight c5 it still looks sort of okay for white but this b5 uh, was a trigger for a series of dangerous events which ultimately weakened, in, if you look at it, the white king. Because what really happened here, uh, the b5 prompted, uh, you know, a knight takes uh, which prompted a d5, which prompted an isolated queen's pawn, which prompted knight e4, which prompted weakening the light squares. So b5 is really getting at the white king indirectly, uh, as, as the evidence of this game, actually. Uh, if we look at the sequence of events now, how the white king was weakened. Um, so queen d2, so takes, so he got the isolated queen's pawn, got the hook into e4, he didn't want to take this pawn, by the way. That probably just gives white something nasty. No need. He just plays knight e4. 
the knight can't really be left there because it's exerting so much influence and it's dangerous to sort of take this pawn now because of things like you know queen a8 and it looks really dangerous and bishop f5s so it looks as though white's really in trouble here and this pawn looks like a goner as well so it's all gone a bit bad um in fact sort of keeping the light square bishop as well uh, not you know taking in the pawn even though these pawns are doubled uh, he, he knows that this knight maneuver is going to be strong and it was and now even the black queen is springing into life with queen b5 you know questioning these other moves like bishop a5 uh, so we have now a sort of mini well an invasion an infiltration which is really dangerous knight f3 also would be attacking the, the bishop over here as well so rook c5 didn't help it was a blunder of course at move 40 uh, maybe before the next time control move 40 blunder so check uh, so he doesn't have to take the queen he just take you know the rook doesn't want rook takes queen so i don't know if there was something in that hedgehog for your own hedgehog games uh, do you think that was useful to look at a hedgehog I hope so. Um, I, I think b5 is one of the key ideas in the hedgehog. But another key idea, maybe, you know, is waiting for white to weaken himself a bit with, with f4s uh, before the hedgehog sprang into life. Collecting a few more weaknesses before preparing, you know, the b5. Um, accepting the isolated queen's pawn, indirectly, like, weakening, uh, you know, the white king. So let's have a look at another game. So this is now um, Grand um, Zuniga uh, from PER. Is that Peru? Um, so he was 2475. PER. Does anyone know the country code? So um, Grand Zuniga playing white plays knight f3. Um, knight f3, which is a sort of a uh, very powerful chameleon opening uh, to be able to transpose into various things but black also plays very flexibly here with with knight f6 Peru oh yeah okay Peru so probably the board one for Peru yeah so um now both sides Finchetto so it could end up being all sorts of things here it could end up being a King's Engine fin Finchetto variation c4 and now it's part of actually plays uh, d5. Doesn't play d6 or anything. d5. And after d4, he takes on c4. Okay, so we have um, Catalan kind of territory. Gives black the pawn immediately. Uh, gives back the pawn. Uh, so this c3, what does it do? You know, may maybe these squares are a bit weakened. This pawn's isolated, but it does give white some initiative here. Potential pressure. A focal point maybe so why does black play this c3 interesting idea isn't it c3 well okay he strikes now at the pawn chain with c5 immediately so knight e5 now knight c6 which um actually you know it kind of offers a pawn here you know knight takes pawn takes uh, now if bishop takes then maybe you know bishop h3 is strong white well, didn't play bishop takes so let's have a look bishop takes um, I assume in this position uh, bishop h3 is, is useful um, you know you, you can imagine white doesn't want to like uh, you know, weaken the position here too much. You know, maybe something like um, knight d5, or is this is there something better here? After bishop takes c6, 
does everyone agree actually bishop h3 here or is there something better um maybe am i missing something is it bishop h3 if he wants the exchange anyway he can he can take the exchange first back then it looks as though you know the pawns the pawn is a bit weak okay so probably so white wasn't interested anyway taking on c6 he plays queen d3 now knight d5 which okay it puts uh, there's a lot of pressure being exerted on these two pawns rook d1 and even more pressure on c3 now with queen a5 okay bishop b2 and now rook rook b8 and if this is defended then rook takes b2 queen takes a3 so this is getting awkward queen c2 is played and it looks as though you know something like bishop f5 might be answerable with e4 because one of plays now actually i wonder um if if you can guess uh black's uh, next move without looking at the score sheet so um try and close the, the notation tab if you've got it open on on play chess so uh if i give you um 20 seconds here what did black play here so 20 seconds starting from from now try and get rid of these arrows <clears throat> okay uh, it seems the whole structure is being targeted with this next move so this pressure is all kind of emphasized rook takes b2 so after queen takes now we have knight takes c3 so the immediate threat is on on um, the rook to win back the exchange and also c takes d would be another pawn for the exchange so after rook d3 we do in fact get another pawn for the exchange and the pawns are undoubled of course so they're more useful you know maybe c5 later but for the moment actually c6 is a target why not take it white does take it bishop takes c6 but then we have bishop a6 and counterplay on e2 now and here it, it's it's getting tricky because if white plays uh, rook d2 then i believe d3 and what we've got here is knight e2 with with that bishop uh threatening the white queen so i think that's too unpalatable to play rook d2 here so white actually gives unfortunately it seems white has to give back uh the exchange so it's only the exchange for a pawn um so rook b1 sorry knight b1 giving back the exchange which was taken back bishop takes d3 so black's a pawn up miserable queen a6 and he's threatening to win another pawn now oh dear this has all gone a bit wrong knight takes pawn takes pawn up tactically he's he's um seems to be holding on opposite color bishop pawn ending but there's a lot of pressure to deal with rook b8 this pawn looks a bit menacing on c3 here bishop a4 and in fact the pawn goes forward c2 attacking the rook and there's also a horrible rook b1 on the cards potentially but for the moment rook f1 which is good because now if rook b1 then bishop takes c2 but uh, rook b2 carries with it the horrible threat of just uh, playing rook takes a2 um, and then maybe you know well here it seems white felt the position uh, was hopeless in fact um, there are probably uh, there's probably also a dangerous threat of bishop c3 bishop d2 here 
uh, just the queen the pawn if nothing else so white actually uh, resigns here I'm not really sure it's um that there's any hope here for white um, if you want we can we can try and look at any defensive uh, possibilities so, say white tries to get out of the way with um, King g2 because white would want to play rook c1 to attack uh, you know c2 possibly uh, let's have a look rook takes a2 would force practically to get this position again pawn up can anyone see a win for black <laughs> who can see a win for black okay so 20 seconds starting from now Yeah, <laughs> actually, I think I've seen something myself. Yeah, well done um, to to those who are mentioning a, a great move here, uh, even faster than Bishop C3 to D2. If King G2, look at this. Oh dear, Bishop H6, Bishop H6, threatening one goes C1, and if F4, it's check. Bishop H6, well done, well done. Bjorn um, and who else that got this? Brilliant. Bishop h6. I don't see any defense. There's no defense, is there? Okay. So things happened really quickly in that game. Uh, Bishop h6 must be the most crushing. I don't see any defense to that. So uh, let's let's have a look in overview and summary of, of this game. Um, so it looked as though White had a good position, and yet a few moves later, um, his whole centre is like under under fire. In this continuation, a very powerful exchange sack, giving White massive problems very quickly. From the opening so quite an elegant uh, win really um, that uh, in this position it looks you know fairly hopeless uh, for defending okay so I hope you got something from that game let's have a look at um, another game shall we Okay, now this is uh, the Polish team, Poland ball one, a two, four, four, five. Uh, so Smith, uh, Wold, Simiz, um, two, four, four, five, playing white, plays d4. And um, uh, Kasparov reacts with knight f6. Okay. Um, just one moment. I'm. I'm just. Just one. One moment. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so C four, C five. I inviting actually a Benko Gambit. Uh, so b5, Kasparov plays the Benko Gambit here, very dynamic. But white doesn't want to give black, you know, too much pressure initiative. He plays actually uh, seemingly a safe option, a4. Um, so with a4, um, black plays actually b4. Um, so he's content, Kasparov is content playing b4 which kind of marks out some dark squares does seem to release the tension somewhat 
Uh, he's not so concerned about this diagonal in this game, uh, but it does have some other stuff, you know, going for it. Okay, so knight d2 g6 after e4 d6. Okay, so this structure here is marking out, you know, some dark squares. Knight gf3, bishop g7. And now after g3, e6, so transforming it into Benoni, Benoni type territory almost. Um, well, I'm trying to peel open the e file now. Now, a very unusual looking move from white was played here, which I find strange to look at, to be honest. But it was played by someone 2445, so there's probably a good reasons for it. Um, maybe white is keen to get rid of, you know, black's light square bishop, because these might be like weaknesses in black's camp. So he plays actually bishop h3. But white's, you know, light squares are also going to be, you know, potentially a bit weakened by this exchange. So Xpraf welcomes that. E takes d5. Okay. So bishop takes uh, c8, light square bishop exchange. C takes. Both sides castle. So it looks a bit strange that, you know, why has white done this, creating, you know, some light square weaknesses around his own king? It looks great for black, you know, the potential pressure on e4. White does have the c4 square, maybe to attack d6 in, in the future. For the moment, that's ruled out, actually. Uh, that future possibility seems ruled out immediately, actually. Black plays c4 now. And with that, it looks as though black's going to get, you know, c3 in, potentially. In fact, he does go for that after queen c2, c3. White took on c3 and now knight b3. Now queen g4 attacking this knight over here. Not minding, you know, this, this diagonal looks really dangerous uh, for white. So white's under pressure and also e4 is under pressure. So it looks like, uh, you know, a strange um, position. What What is white doing here? Um, okay, so. Um, What is white doing here? White gives up a pawn now with knight fd4. So he gives up e4 to get the c3 pawn. Okay, there's method and madness. But then d5 drops, he's still a pawn down here. So if we take stock here, black, it would seem, is a pawn up. Uh, with a really good position. So where is White's compensation here? He's also got, you know, weakened king. It looks really, I don't really understand White's play in this game. Does anyone? For me, I thought this game was a bit strange. Um, but it, nevertheless, from this position, it took Sparth quite a few moves uh, to make progress here. So this is a bit of 18. Does, do most people think black's just a lot better here? Or, or do you think there's something about the white position which has got something going for it? Any evaluations if I give you 10 seconds? Well, I'll, just, I'll just carry on. I think I might just carry on. It looks as though black's pulling up anyway. Knight b6. So, you know, maybe he's got knight c4s on the cards. He's put pressure on d4, maybe d5 and knight c4. So, rook e1, okay, queen d5, queen d1. The other knight comes in. After rook a2, um, Xparf is tempted, it seems, to use this pin. Uh, so, he actually takes on d4 here. Rook d2, and now knight e5 uh, so here if rook takes d4 then knight f3 check so knight takes d4 is played and okay it looks pretty uh you know dangerous uh for this tactical idea coming up 
that if if the rook moves now there's queen d4 queen d4 knight f3 check uh, but white simply plays rook c2 here okay so it looks as though white's holding on so why did Sparv give up that beautiful dark square bishop I'm not really sure if he got overexcited just then uh, but this dark square bishop why get rid of it I don't know what's going on in this game so rook a c8 uh, because you know in this position if, if queen d4 you know queen, queen d4 knight f3 you know knight takes d4 rook takes c4 it's, it's not so clear is it so um rook c rook a c8 renewing the threat of queen d4 now maybe you know a clever move maybe Sparov missed this rook c3 just defending f f3 so we have a game again which seems okay black is a pawn up though still so knight b6 and then bishop b2 and 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 you know theoretically you know these these dark squares could be an issue rook takes c3 bishop takes c3 um rook c8 the bishop goes back now rook c4 so a4 is under fire black wants the queens off to avoid any like issues uh simplify maybe or does he we're about to find out knight b5 instead of taking the queen off he actually plays rook takes a4 winning another pawn protecting his pawn and of course knight takes d5 if white wants to exchange off queens so I did two pawns down uh, so white it seems can um, is threatened also with knight f3 check here so he's got no time for knight takes d6 so bishop takes e5 d takes rook takes <laughs> I don't know strange game black is still a pawn up in this end game um, was this all really necessary I don't know but he's going to win this ending anyway after rook e7 a5 he's got a powerful outside pass pawn knight d6 rook d4 not minding losing f7 if he can go to the knight ending this should be quite easy without too much counterplay maybe rook moves rook d7 forcing the rooks off so in this knight ending now this pawn uh, looks as though you know this should give black the win even after all this <laughs> this knight is having to stumble back to rescue against this pawn situation but the king is also free to run it's over here um, so king e7 a4 the king comes in aggressively check so king aggressive outside pass pawn maybe this is enough to win easily knight d3 going actually for for these pawns now check knight f3 if he can just win these pawns actually and his king could like come over here you know gobble these guys up doesn't matter about the pawn use that as bait h1 knight e5 so king comes in desperate pawn sack he's going to win all these pawns isn't he it's going to be on this side where the king's over over there okay so he's got the two pass pawns now so this should be enough to win shouldn't it check i believe it is knight f5 just gets rid of that okay white resigned here bit of a strange game um a bit of a grind in in this position it is totally helpless it seems because the king f3 the knight's going to be driven away from 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 the action to, to stop the pawn the king's far too far away okay uh i didn't think it was a particularly neat game uh the way it panned out so let's have a look in overview and summary anyway so um b4 yeah it looked as though black got an active position 
with a pawn up for not much. Um, and now a strange set of events after rook a2. Bishop takes d4. And uh, we get this ending which Kasparov is, is okay to win uh, the ending here, getting the rooks off. So the pawn was used as a sort of distraction to get uh, to the white pawns on, on the king side. So um, ending technique here, great. Okay, so uh, let's go on to um, another game. Now, um, this is a very interesting game um, indeed playing the USA team Yasser Soen who was 2580 at the time um, okay let's let's um, okay Yasser Soen playing white very interesting game and I've, I've actually played Yasser Soen once on on uh, a five minute game on on uh, ICC once uh, it was quite good fun he crushed me quite badly <laughs> so he's still really good it was only like in in recent couple of years he's still really good especially at blitz I think he was always good at blitz um, so he's still really good so even at this time he was really formidable um, in 1986 I mean particularly at this time in, ni in 1986 so d4 was played. And he's a great commentator as well here. Yeah. So he's one of the classic, you know, commentators. You know, Morris Ashley. You, you know, um, Daniel King. That these really classic commentators as well. So, and of course he's written books. And do anyway, So uh, let's let's go on with the game. So knight f6. So we get a king's engine, or do we? No, it's either a king's engine or Groomfield. It turns out to be Groomfield d5. And Yasser plays a very interesting bishop g5 system here, which encourages knight e4 to try and sort of punish that bishop. Um, white plays cd, giving up the dark squared bishop voluntarily. e6, this is all for like theory, hitting the knight and, and getting back the pawn. Knight f3, e takes d5. So white's given up the dark square bishop, but um, all the pieces are harmonious with the pawn structure. Uh, this bishop could be biting on granite, you know, potentially. You know, it could be a formidable um, pawn chain. Uh, but you know, maybe c5 is useful for black at some point. In fact, w what we get here is immediate clamping down of c5. Yes, so one plays b4. Uh, which not only clamps down on, on, on c5, but you know, maybe later there's going to be a, a knight maneuver to c5. Queen d6, a3. Okay. Of castles, e3, c6. Bishop e2. So it looks as though c5 is marked out for white. The bishop doesn't seem to be having such great fun on this diagonal. White seems to have a very solid position. Bishop f5, castles knight d7, which might imply at some point, you know, maybe maybe a knight maneuver to c4 at some point, um, or or the knight could go over here, of course, and maybe overprotect e4. Knight a4. Jumping into that c5 square, potentially after a5, actually he doesn't go in. He actually just supports the pawn now with queen b3. Okay, b5, which uh, fixes these pawns on on knight squares, which means c5 is a bit vulnerable actually, and it's gone into knight c5. Now again, a4, it's it's very committal uh, for the pawn structure here. Queen c3. Knight b6. 
as though yeah actually c4 is going to be useful and if takes you know maybe then takes and then d5 will be useful so at this stage at move 17 who do you think's uh, doing well in so far in this uh, in this position who do you think's doing well if I give you 20 seconds to evaluate this position so white to move if that makes any difference but um what do you reckon better for white better for black bat equal let me know tell me so 20 seconds starting from now Okay, some comments here on play chess uh, the beyond the blum b4 is interesting immediately starting a minority attack well it's the minority attack has been ruled out here clearly in this structure hack thomas better for white because of the bad c5 pawn c6 pawn the bad c6 pawn um on, on twitch live stream black has more open lines yeah black has more open lines well you know okay black's got the semi open file here but white's got the semi open file here uh target target so let's see how the game progresses yes so when plays knight d2 okay so after rook a e8 now rook f e1 black seems to be building up pressure now doubling rooks against e3 okay they look pretty the rooks but e3 is solid enough at the moment g3 okay weakening it seems voluntarily some light squares but if the bishop's tucked in over here does it matter in fact voluntarily offering bishop exchange so robbing black of the bishop pair this bishop is still the quality of it how do we define the quality of this this bishop is this bishop high quality or low quality aren't the white knights better here they can hop around to any color square of choice with this bishop being bad um you know maybe white would welcome a knight exchange potentially f5 as though you know black might be aiming to destroy white structure at some point h4 preventing g5 whoops the sniff of any g5s have just been ruled out and um yeah we get here you know very interesting position i thought now here um knight c4 might be seen as a bit controversial because uh, this bishop might not be that good you know what if takes though takes you get d5 maybe that's useful white avoided at knight f3 bishop f6 after rook e2 rook g7 as though is there really going to be action on the cards here rook h1 sort of saying well you know i'll, I'll get pressure Rook e e1 after h6. You know, is Kasparov really playing for g5 here? Is that really the source of counterplay? g5. g5 is kind of ruled out now with this next move, queen d3. So he's on f5. So if g5 takes, you know, queen f5. Rook f8. And now we see knight d2, which might imply. Uh, well, either maybe taking the knight at some point, or it certainly looks as though f4 would be bad for e3. That's that's not on the cards. So knight d2. Okay, queen e8. Funny enough, knight takes c4 is used now. D takes, and it looks so. Isn't black going to get d5? Queen d1. But now the queen coming to f3 would parry a queen on d5, and also ask questions about this c6 pawn so isn't this knight better than the bishop rook e7 
okay um, so potentially you know, maybe there's going to be a threat of f4 or something uh, there's pressure on d4 and on this f file rook e f1 gets out of the way of any pins queen f7 as though coming to d5 is useful queen f3 queen d5 okay yes yeah, so it takes off the queens and undoubles blacks pawns because this this ending this this bishop still looks useless as ever the knight looks better than the bishop for me personally at the moment um now we're going to get annotation bias um now you're probably all gonna all you're all skewed uh, when you look at kasparov game uh there's annotation bias towards Kasparov having the brilliant position and that's a really dangerous thing I've seen a lot of annotators on YouTube and everywhere else always take the side actually of the higher rated player which is really quite unobjective um, if you look objectively at this position um, it looks as though isn't isn't black strategically crushed or is that my imagination what is this bishop doing on f6 it's doing nothing still the knight okay it hasn't got many prospects at the moment but what if white um you know arranges a strategic uh break so king f3 bishop g7 rook d1 so he's reinforcing d4 Rook F F seven, Rook D two. What is going on here? Rook E eight. Black is is forced to wait for a moment to see what White's doing. Bishop F eight. As though is is this going to just be traded off? But then D five pressure. You can't really allow D takes because of D five. Surely not. So Rook D G one. No, because Prof is not interested in that exchange. Rook D one. So a waiting game for a moment. So it looks as though what is going on? Nothing? Is it going to be a draw? Waiting. Now finally takes a radical decision here at move 47. Uh, because surely uh, by taking uh, d5 is going to be a problem. So do you, do you all agree with this bishop takes c5 here? Um, do, do you agree or disagree? If I give you 20 seconds, do you think this was a bad decision? Do you think black should have been content with a draw in this position? If I give you 20 seconds, starting from now. Anyone? Bishop c5, two committal. He's making this an exploitable weakness, isn't he? Frontal pressure on the d file, on the d pawn. Maybe he's overly keen uh, to win against Yasusoan. You know? Because um, actually, what would White's strategic break be? White hasn't got a strategic break. If White can't really try for f3 and e4, it would just be weakening his structure too much. So maybe White, it looks as though White was content for a draw, but Bishop takes c5. There seems to be a clear uh, target now of the d5 pawn. Okay, so rook e4, rook h e1, which might imply something like this rook d4 again not minding an exchange here and maybe you know wanting a draw or something um, g5 another committal decision uh, because now surely white can take and have the option of using the h file potentially so why what about this what 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 was this about g5 so okay so white takes and plays rook ed1 okay rook takes 
rook takes rook h7 so is the rook really gonna come and maybe attack things or this pawn okay king e2 um and with king e2 um actually okay uh rook h3 was played white does have an undermining move now which he uses g4 so that rook is useful on d4 to support g4 try and get at this pawn f4 e takes okay but what about this a3 hang on a sec a3 a pawn rook takes a3 but what about this f pawn it's turning into a g pawn oh dear isn't this really dangerous was this was this all needed what, what what's happened here this was a very committal uh, approach to try and win the game let's just rewind just slightly before we get into this was this all really needed um if if rook here then maybe g4 was good anyway um so this idea of coming here to attack this pawn it looks quite tactical so let's let's run with it this this happened but this pawn looks dangerous now check c3 the rook comes back and now it looks as though isn't this two dangerous pawns here g6 what about g7 g8 d3 uh, so it looks critical if rook takes d3 then c2 um, is 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 winning um, so it looks as though c2 and d2 um, but here here there's a there's a crushing move it seems what what did white play here so you've got two dangerous past pawns here so if you are playing white and I'll flip the board can can you stop these pawns and try and emphasize your pawn so if I give you 20 seconds here what what would you play here with white to try and beat Sparov no I don't think rook takes d3 works does it if rook d3 c c2 rook c2 and we got rook a3 that's a clever trap isn't it isn't it I haven't checked with engine but it looks as though that's that's uh End of game for white. Would do you, do you all agree? In the game, king e3 was played, uh, which means actually c2. You can just play rook c1. So you've got the lock and key on d2, and you've got your g pawn. The king's a brilliant blockader. So I think I think that was that was the last trap set here. So anyway, after king e3, Sparov plays. Um, Rook takes f2. And now g7. Just ignoring uh, the rook. And actually, Xparov resigned here. Um, he resigned here. This was his loss in the Olympiad of 1986, his only loss, actually. So, why is it uh, lost? Um, what, what can we do here? 
uh, C2. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe just maybe Rook H one would win. I don't know, because because there's no is there any time for this D two check? You know the, the king's getting mated, isn't it? What is that? Actually, I got this wrong. Okay, forget rook h1. Um, okay, so what would be a good move here for white? This looks quite dangerous, actually. Um, so in this position, if you were playing white, uh, so why did Kasparov resign after g7? So say c2, what do we play here with white? <laughs> Oh yeah, there's there's taking as a knight as well. Yeah, okay. Um, does that really uh, matter? Why, why can't we just queen? Uh, you want you want to take with a knight, really? If you, if you just take with the queen for a sec, that can't be it, can it? There's, there's no there's no mate or anything so so do we are we agreed that rook h1 here <laughs> oh dear is rook h1 the best move so white to play here how, how do we win this with white anyone if i give you 20 seconds starting from now I think it's personally rook h1. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with rook h1. So we get this critical position after d2. Should we queen the pawn? Do we queen the pawn? Or play a check? Maybe if we play a check, just concerned about this position. Okay, white's play here, check then queen. Yeah, but the problem is, right, um, I don't know if I'm being dense here, uh, but if you queen here, um, black queen's here. Um, sorry, not there, but d1. Hasn't black then got queen uh, d7? I don't don't think the knight helps. You, you know, I don't I don't think the knight helps. Check. Yeah, that, that's it. Check. Right, rook h7. Okay, so queen a8 or something. Yeah, mate. All right, so uh, Kasparov, he tried too hard, did he? So um, if we go back, <laughs> that, that was a bit dramatic. Um, so he tried maybe too hard with black, um, and he lost this game. So it's quite interesting. So... He didn't seem to have a great position really from early on. Kind of locked pawn structure. Um, but it, it's as though he was trying, you know, for like g5 at some point. Um, it's kind of 
kept under lock and key this g5 and then we did actually get this exchange on c4 so we get this knight versus bishop uh, situation uh, which it looks as though it sh you know maybe should have been a draw um, I mean if white's not doing anything isn't this just a draw uh, so did Kasparov try too hard it looks as though um, uh, King e2 you know what does he do here if he had tried rook h1 then isn't g4 good so rook here this pawn is still dangerous isn't it I've got this pawn running f6 and here this one drops um, so that that doesn't look much of an improvement uh, so this this tactically uh, you know going for a three try and get these two pawns going um, but uh, it puts the position on knife edge because of this G pawn really doesn't it this G pawn puts the position on some sort of knife edge here so check uh, the two pawns come in and a delicate king maneuver king e3 uh, which you know basically this this pawn is a menace and um, black resigned here so I thought that was an interesting game um, and it looks even in the final position let's have a quick look at um, this other stuff you know d8 knight check I can't promote unfortunately I haven't got the option to, I don't know how to set the option of promoting tonight but I don't think check helps because king d4 anyway if, if you promote a knight under promote a knight uh, so should we have a look at one more game or should we um, carry on next week actually and there might be one more game um, or, or just to complete things do, do you want one more game um, one more game sorry explain explain this sorry I think exchange of Bishop against Knight was wrong yeah I think he just tried too hard to win you know you, you know you know uh, I think this is one of the seven deadly sins according to Rousen uh, wanting uh, certain results when when sometimes the position doesn't justify it because when he played uh, bishop takes um, here this is you know basically um, controversial isn't it um, in one simple way um, what was white doing white wasn't doing anything white was seemingly trying to hold the position all of this is about holding the position it's not about a break pawn break is it uh, I, I think though there, there was one more game just just cover the Olympiad games with black um, oh no it was a draw it was a bit of a boring draw with Portish actually uh, it was a 71 um, move draw I just really wanted to cover the decisive games so um, Anyway, Daniel King's on now with uh, Kremlin Iranian Game 3 Roundup on Play Chess Server. So uh, I don't want to take away from his audience. Great commentator, Daniel King. So um, I think we'll call it a day there. Okay, um, so maybe see you next week. Okay? Okay, thanks all. Uh, see you next week, yeah? And uh, have fun, um, okay, with your chess. Okay. Thanks very much.